can't look at someone and know what the blood sugar is, so we have to test them. Absolutely. Right How many times a day would you say you should be tested? I would say minimally four times a day. That's it's the sometimes minimum. Sometimes more. And sometimes more. It depends. I'm saying minimally I'm assuming that the person with diabetes is under good control because you have to check uh, blood sugar in the morning, you have to check it before lunch, before dinner, bedtime, and we advise also maybe once, twice a month at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, if you are on an intensive insulin treatment, a pump or lactose insulin, you might check it uh, certainly more often because you would like to know what certain meals, how high blood glucose goes. Uh, only uh, because that people might ask, Insulin cannot be taken by mouth, but uh, recently, and we were part of the studies way back, there is a, uh, 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 insulin available for inhalation. It can be given. They have, you have to be concerned about the lung function, but it's uh, well known that you can inhale insulin through your lungs. Actually, this was developed in before in 1920s, and then because of the other turmoil, uh, it was forgotten. Now studies have shown that uh, if you inhale insulin, it has the same action uh, like uh, short-acting insulin. So people now, many people, especially adults, might take, you still need insulin injection, you need that long-acting insulin once a day, and then every time you eat, you inhale insulin. We have not done it in pediatrics, we uh, try to get some uh, patients on this insulin, but because the main concern is if it's any, any adverse effect on your lung function, uh, then it's down the road. There are just no long-term studies. Now, the reason you check the blood sugar is that there are good and bad things, but so some things can go too low, which is very That's dangerous. correct, yes. Insulin is important for bringing blood sugar down or preventing from rising, but too much insulin will will lead to another problem, and that's low blood sugar, also called uh, by doctors hypoglycemia. And that's one of the complications of diabetes treatment, and I would say that's one of the most acute complications. Because if you are lacking insulin and you have diabetes, you will blood sugar will uh, rise slowly and you get symptoms, uh, drinking and urinating, like in the beginning. But low blood sugar can happen very, very quickly. It can be lethal. And it can be lethal and it can, you can develop, uh, you can go to coma, you can have what's called hypoglycemic convulsions, and in a small child it could be detrimental to the brain function, so, because the brain needs glucose all the time and oxygen. Now the other side, high blood sugar is bad because it can cause complications. That's correct. High blood sugar means that it, or not only that it's high in, in blood, but it, the, all organs and blood vessels and kidneys, everything gets saturated by this high sugar. And that's probably not the only reason, but the main reason why people with diabetes will develop what we call long-term or chronic complication. And there are many, but most important are the eye changes and kidney disease. And the kidney, you have to make sure you don't spill any protein. That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. Routine management now for anybody with diabetes is to, even if the person is doing very well, is to check urine for protein oh, at right. least once yeah. a year. And uh, it's, uh, the test is called microalbuminuria. We can now detect we can now detect very small amount of protein called microalbumin and we now are doing uh, involved in, in studies looking at the blood pressure also what we call the overnight blood pressure monitoring and trying to put it together with those the protein in the urine. This would be the first sign that there could be some kidney involvement. And they should see a, a, an eye doctor? An eye doctor they should see routinely. Uh, ADA, American Diabetes Association, I'm not I think they recommend a uh, routine checkup after maybe age 12, 14. We try to get, as soon as we diagnose the diabetes, we try to get uh, once a year evaluation by an ophthalmologist. There's a test called hemoglobin A1C. Yes. Is that a good test? <coughs> it's a, one of the best tests. It's uh, also a test we call test which does not lie. Hemoglobin A1C gives you the average blood glucose in a person over the last three months. Because the way how it works, uh, 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 the sugar is attached in, in bloodstream to our red cells. 
and you can measure how much sugar is attached to the red cell, and that's called the hemoglobin, or A1C, also called glycosylated hemoglobin. Once a particular red cell is uh, exposed to glucose, it will stay in that red cells, and the red cell has a lifespan of 90 days, 120 days. So once it's in until the, the red cell dies, you can measure it. So hemoglobin A1C, it's not in milligram per cent, it's measured in percentage. Normal hemoglobin A1C in non-diabetic person is less than 6%. Uh, somebody who is well controlled would have hemoglobin A1C 6, 7, maybe 7.5%. Seven People who have hemoglobin A1C 9, 10, 12, they are, in, they are in, in poor control. This is the test we now do routinely every three months at the visit, whether it's a visit with our nutritionist or doctor or diabetes educator. It's a very important test.